What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another team review. This time, the Cree. So before we go any further into this, I want to discuss what people mean when they say the Cree. Now, there are about 10 characters in the game right now with the tag Cree. Uh, this is not what people mean when you hear them refer to the Cree team. Usually, the better Cree characters like Minerva, Captain Marvel, and now a little bit more of Korath and uh, Ultimus are kind of a separate entity. They they really didn't not work well together. I don't think that's fair, but they were never really used in their entirety because there was always something better to do with the characters that were left. For example, Captain Marvel was good as a brawler or just basically on her own almost Ultron level of power where uh, Korath was kind of lackluster and Minerva uh, previously was on a team called the BKT, ironically the best Kree team, or it's basically any team where you needed a little bit extra of a push or stability you would put Minerva on. Ultimus was pretty bad for a really long time, and even though he was reworked, it didn't necessarily make him worth investing in. And Korath, well... Hmm. So whenever you hear someone say the Kree, there's a Kree um, in that war defense room, or... I have to fight the Kree in Blitz or something along those lines. The uh, core of that is usually the minions in some configuration plus Ronin. So when we go into this, I want you to know that in general, at least at the time of this video, the Kree is usually the team that's used to unlock Nick Fury with Ronin replacing one of the characters, depending on what, you know, what power they have or... Uh, what you need them to do and mainly because Ronin makes the Kree minions uh, stronger in general So let's go quickly into a blitz fight to kind of showcase what they do and I'll discuss availability So as for availability the Kree is uh, relatively Early accessible in the, uh, more so than a lot of other teams not necessarily at the beginning of the game But usually about 30 to 60 days somewhere in that range you start seeing access to the characters uh, two of them are in the raid store, being a Kree Oracle and Ronin. Uh, Kree Royal Guard is available in the Blitz store, so you'll probably accidentally unlock him while you're opening Blitz orbs. And the other three characters are Node Farmable, Kree Reaper having two nodes, one I believe in Heroes and the other in Nexus, and the remaining two characters, Cyborg and uh, Noble, are available in, respectively, Cosmic and Nexus. So... You can access these characters relatively quickly. One of the downsides is that they're not inherently good at anything except unlocking Nick Fury. That said, they are still a very viable team. As you can see, they pretty much do what they're supposed to do no matter what. Uh, I wouldn't farm them early, uh, especially if my prediction of Nick Fury going into the Iron Man retirement home uh, and becoming a permanently available member of the team comes true i think you probably be better off waiting and just seeing how you naturally obtain kree characters before you start target farming them that said if you watched my previous video about shield you can tell that while the minions themselves are very accessible early and very useful early uh, nick fury the guy who brings that entire team together it really isn't and he's not as high a priority as maybe he was at one other point and since you have to work on the Kree to get Nick Fury, and it's two different teams to make the full value of him, I don't think this team's availability uh, necessitates you as a player working on them early, unless you really, really, really like Nick Fury. At that point, do whatever you like. But they are accessible early. They're just not worth the investment of time and energy because they don't unlock a character that's going to be incredibly helpful to you as soon as you get him. So their availability, relatively early in the game, I wouldn't quite call them an early team, but they're definitely one of the first teams you may complete accidentally or could complete with a little bit of effort uh, after you go through characters like the Guardians, Defenders, Sinister Six, etc. But their usability, with one exception, is pretty good. They can be used pretty much anywhere in the game they're just not the best at what they do, if that makes sense. For example, we already know that the, uh, the Kree minions, specifically the five minion characters right here, 
unlock Nick Fury at five, six, and seven star. Cool. The Kree characters themselves, by the time you get into Cosmic, you probably don't have them uh, that well invested. And if you were working on teams like the Guardians or maybe even as Guardians, you probably don't need them. They're not as good. They're adequate for Cosmic Nodes. They're adequate for Villains Nodes. But usually by the time you get to the point where you can farm them reliably, uh, both in raid credits from the raid store and in their various nodes, you're not required to have them. Uh, and there were better options going along the way. So they are useful for these things, even though you wouldn't use them there. Another thing is they are a relatively good war team in the early stages of war, when you're climbing up through the early silvers, and I wouldn't necessarily say gold, but maybe even gold one. They are a very good offense team in that they are very good at beating mishmash teams, if that makes sense. If they uh, are placing random characters together that are strong, like any team with just Ant-Man and Wasp, well, the Kree are probably going to take them out. Any team with uh, Deadpool and Cable as a combo, any non-meta team, specifically some of the teams we've already done reviews for, the Kree are very good at taking them out. And depending on your skill and your investment in them, they might even be able to take out a handful of the meta teams. I know from personal experience, I've been able to beat a handful of defenders, not necessarily really powerful and invested in defenders, but they are adequate uh, for that. What you're going to find is a lot of people end up placing the Kree minions with Ronin on defense because as a defense team, characters like Kree Reaper and Kree Cyborg tend to do extra damage uh, when they least expect it. They also benefit very well from buffs uh, like the barracks buff as well as any of the buffs you get from the rooms like Cargo Bay or uh, engineering buff, something along those lines. They become stronger as you put more stuff on them. They're they're kind of the first team that was reworked, uh, first minion team that was reworked in the entire game. Uh, I think Shield with Fury was the absolute first, but when you started looking at all of the villain teams, like the Hydra, the AIM, the Mercenaries, and the Kree, all the villain minions were pretty horrendous with like a very few exceptions. So this was the first attempt of Fox Next to rework a team and make them viable. And for what it's worth, they were for a long time. They were a very good overall team, but they're not great. So if you have a Kree team, once you've unlocked them, once you've gotten your Nick Fury and you're like, gee, what do I do with them now? They're pretty relegated to a decent Blitz team. They will win an eight maybe 8-1, 8-2, that kind of place. I don't know if they're winning an 8-3 a lot. Maybe yours might, but that's going to come to diminishing returns as your 8-3 starts seeing really strong meta teams. They really don't have that punch-up quality. There's no real team they hard counter. They really just beat up on uh, no synergy teams, if that makes sense. But they are good in war. They're good on offense or defense, so if you've invested in them and don't want to deal with them, you can place them on defense and they will require a response, uh, whether it be a stronger synergy team. Really depends on where you guys are in war and how many rooms you're clearing, how many rooms your opponents tend to clear. If you're not going, you know, full clear all the time, then the Kree is a very adequate defense team. But at the same point, they might be adequate at offense for beating up some random mishmash team your opponents have. And the only other note I will make is that there are Kree requirements in the Gamma Raid, uh, one of the Greek Raids. And turns out that while you can use this team, the named Kree that we mentioned earlier, the Captain Marvel, Minerva, uh, and even in some cases Korath, as well as Ronan himself, uh, tend to just be better characters overall. Like Captain Marvel and Minerva are clearly some of the best characters in the game. Uh, if you are using characters from the Kree minions and this per version of the Kree team, you tend to be using characters like Noble or Oracle for a little bit more sustain, some energy throws, uh, and of course the assist that uh, Kree Noble could put from Captain Marvel instead of one of the lesser minions. Uh, Ronin, of course, is all around good. So that's pretty much it for their usability. They're very useful, but they're kind of very mediocre at what they do when you use them. But there is a use for them, so don't feel like you've wasted your time working on them. The, Usually, you can see from mine, I got them to level 65, I got them all to about gear tier 9, 
and then I, I just kind of stopped. Uh, there wasn't really much of a reason for me to invest more in them. Now, I know some people who have very strong Cree teams and they're like, yeah, they're great. But uh, I found that once I got them to where they are right here, which was usually enough to get them to unlock the seven star Nick Fury for what it's worth, that was it. I, I didn't really need to worry too much or put any more effort into them. Now that we've talked about the usability of the team, I want to go into the breakpoints. Uh, this is going to be relatively quick, but I am going to go over the characters. I will say that uh, the Kree minions themselves, there is no no essential tier 4s. Uh, nothing. This team does not require tier 4s in order to do what it does, because what it does isn't great. That said, there are some good tier 4s, and I'd like to go over them, but we'll do it quickly, because most of my reviews go really in-depth, and they're important. And this one, I'd rather you just take away, don't, don't really bother tier 4ing them. But... If you like the Kree for some reason, let's talk about this. We'll start with Kree Royal Guard. Kree Royal Guard, cosmic bio character. Uh, not one of the better tanks in the game, but overall okay. You check out his passive while in taunt. When attacked, 50% chance to generate one ability energy to a random Kree ally. This is great. This is pretty much the best thing he does because he taunts immediately uh, at the opening turn of the game. So. If there was a 100% chance to generate the energy, this ability might be amazing, but it only goes to 75 with tier fours. He gets a little bit extra armor. He gets armor per Kree ally. He's a tank, that's it. He doesn't really need anything. Call to glory, uh, no reason to heal himself for a hair more. Percentage health is all that matters. These hard numbers are irrelevant. Wasted tier four in my opinion. Uh, Guardian Blaster, attack primary target for arbitrary amount of damage with a chance to gain counter. He's not the damage dealer, he's the tank, his job is to filter energy. Kree is very good at giving themselves energy. Uh, I don't think any of these stand out as worthwhile investments. He is an adequate member and you tend to always include him on the team just to make sure that the squishier members of your Kree are not dead and that he has a chance of giving them energy for their awesome attacks. Uh, moving to the next character, we have Kree Noble. Kree Noble is also pretty much an always include. Uh, the main reason why is her passive, Loyalist. On turn, clear one negative effect from one random ally uh, with a negative effect. So it always chooses a ally with a negative effect. It doesn't do a random, and if they have, blah, blah, blah. If the ally is Kree, they get two negative effects removed. Uh, if you do tier for it, it removes two negative effects from two allies. Nah, it's, it's a good investment, but it's not great. So it is what it is. Imperial Decree, this is a great ability. It applies uh, assist now to an adjacent ally, which is great if you choose who the adjacent character is. So I do tend to keep her on an edge, usually on the opposite side of wherever I keep the tank. And then I put Kree Reaper, whoever I want to do the most damage, maybe Ronin if you want to dispel uh, next, so you can get a pretty decent uh, solid attack. Kree Reaper does hit like a truck. We'll get into that when we talk about it. If that ally is Kree, they also gain offense up. Duh. Attack primary target for pretty huge chunk of damage, and it only goes up with tier fours. Uh, again, she's not really the damage dealer, and this attack is only ready every third turn, so not super relevant, but uh, all in all, pretty good attack and works really well with key characters, so cool. Kree sidearm. Uh, Always remove a positive effect and generate energy ability. This is probably the highest impact tier four she has, as opposed to a 75% chance to clear one positive effect and generate an energy. If you do have extra tier fours and you want to make this team look cooler, this will do it, uh, especially if you start going into a little bit more hybrid teams using characters like Minerva or uh, CM. These, uh, this investment will be worthwhile, just not necessarily worthwhile for the team to do what it's supposed to do a lot of what they do is just cute plus you don't really control where the energy goes it just goes uh it is a good investment though i wouldn't regret it and another like i said character that is very important in general on any kree team you put together now we start working on the situational characters kree oracle is better for things like raids or um, war defense because sustainability is very important in those game modes plus there's a timer so when we take a look at his passive, uh, whenever this character or ally gains energy, heal them for an arbitrary amount of health plus 5% of this character's max health. Since that team is throwing out a whole bunch of energy, uh, yeah, clearly this is going to do exactly what you want. 
if that character uh, is Ronin or a Kree minion, heal them for double the amount. So one, he's actually a pretty decent like spot healer with this passive, especially if you're using characters that throw out energy like Star Wars or Shuri. That said, I wouldn't necessarily be working on Kree Oracle as the spot healer. What I will say is it's hilarious if you have Thanos on the team because every time Thanos you get a kill, Thanos gives energy out to Kree and then he ends up healing them and he does so by kneeling down. It's adorable. It takes like 12 seconds. It's a really fun animation. We used to do it a lot on stream. But there's really no reason to tier 4 this. The healing is already okay on the Kree team. You don't need a little bit more. And again, I cannot stand hard number tier 4s. These get outscaled incredibly quickly to the point where it's almost irrelevant to even touch them. Uh, Nano Machine Cloud, this uh, is okay. Uh, apply regeneration all allies. If it's Kree, they get two regeneration stacks. Uh, if you tier four it, apply regeneration for two turns. This does not affect the additional regeneration for Ronin. So it's a one, two turn stack and then a free regeneration. Doesn't matter. Don't invest in this. Regeneration is a very lackluster heal, even though this character does have a pretty chonky health pool, even at very low investment. Uh, it's not great. It's not doing the best, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. However, it's basic. Uh, again, another one that always generates the ability energy. 80% uh, versus always. I think 80% is a reliable number anyway, and you're not basicing that often with this character. He's not very fast, but it's a decent attack. Has a chance to generate ability energy to a random ally. Again, if he gives an energy to a Kree, healing, blah, blah, blah. Good investment, not great. Uh, I noticed I didn't even do... I'll just do this right now. I have enough resources, but it, it really didn't make too much of a difference. Uh, he's okay. Uh, he want him in more defensive or sustain situations, obviously, than you want in like a full out attack. So I wouldn't necessarily use him on the blitz version of the team or on the war offense version of the team, but I would definitely use him uh, on more defense or uh, if you're using the team on raids for one reason or another, like maybe you don't have characters like Minerva or CM unlocked, then. He is one of the better healers. He's the only healer for the team, but he's uh, one of the better options. Uh, the next character that is optional is Cyborg. This is the swap between him and Oracle. I like Cyborg for offensive attacks and things that aren't uh, incredibly important for you as a player to uh, sustain through, just kind of power through it. Another note is that Cyborg also has the most usability outside of this team. If you were to pair him with characters like Korath and Ultimus, uh, he works a little bit better, and the main reason why is integrated systems. On enemy taunt, he has a chance, which becomes always, uh, to gain offense up for two turns and apply offense up to any Kree ally for two turns. Now, if you have Korath and Ultimus, Korath has the opportunity to put taunt on a character immediately, therefore he has a chance of getting on. You get it. Uh, it's a pretty good ability. He works well on both sides, and if you do use him with the Kree minions, uh, this doesn't come up that often, but if a character does happen to taunt, you have two ways to clear it between the Ronin uh, basic and the basic from Kree Noble. Uh, on turn, copy all positive effects from ally Ultimus to this character. Again, that kind of goes in what I was saying before. He can be used on either sides, but since who cares about Ultimus, uh, this is not necessarily worth the investment. Uh, the guaranteed offense up in Kree is probably only good if you're really, really granular or have an infinite supply of resources. Auto targeter, attack primary target for decent damage, and then 80% or 100% chance to attack again for 260. I think this is a worthwhile. He is a very good damage dealer, so guaranteeing a second attack at more damage uh, is great, except the second attack doesn't increase. So if they both went up by 50, I would say absolutely, but mm, it's close enough. And of course, the energy blaster. This one's really cool. Uh, decent attack, but and on kill, chain to one adjacent target for decent damage, and grant one ability energy to one or two random allies. Uh, obviously, again, energy, blah, 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 tier four, don't need it. But uh, it's really cool if you can kind of choose out how you're killing, because once you get that kill, you're guaranteeing throwing energy out, and you're repeating the process. He can mow down characters. That's one of the reasons why this team is so good at cleaning up in war uh, or beating up on, on random teams, because... You choose a target by the time he takes a turn, he can basic them and start doing damage to the next one you can kind of roll through. Very good offensively. Defensively, meh, not so much, but again, he works better with characters like Korath and Ultimus. Uh, use at your own discretion. We now move to Kree Reaper. Kree Reaper is uh, early on one of my favorite uh, minions in the game because she hits like a truck. Also, these are very strange arm controls, and I don't understand how she doesn't constantly break her arm when she punches because that's not 
Like that's just not how physics works. That can't really support the... Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, Hunter Killer. Uh, on crit, heal self for 10% of max health and generate one ability energy from one random crate. Uh, it becomes two with... Well, I'll just do this. I don't even know why. That This is how long it's been, right? Uh, I don't need the extra crit chance. She has a pretty decent crit chance on her own, even with the 10% and the five per Kree minion ally. She usually ends up at about 40 to 50 crit chance, so it's good enough, right? Uh, on crit, heal self, ability energy, blah, blah, blah. And they love giving out energy, right? It's their favorite thing. Ferocious Pursuit, uh, heal block last two turns. This is irrelevant. Uh, attack primary target for all of the damage, and it'll probably crit, uh, and then apply heal block. Uh, really good. She actually is really fun when you take her against the Captain Marvel and immediately ult the Captain Marvel who gets a heal block, can't heal herself, and takes half of her health and damage. Kree Reaper is the damage dealer of this team. She's just a little bit slow at it, and it only comes in giant bursts whenever you can use this ability. But this wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Uh, as for the basic, also a relatively decent uh, attack. Uh, pretty decent damage. 70% chance to apply bleed. Under normal circumstances, I would say going from 70 to 100 is worth it. That said, uh... So we're not doing it. Uh, she is the strongest member of the team. She is almost always included in whatever Kree minion version of the team you're using because of just how high impact her damage is. I personally always like to keep her right next to Kree Noble so that when Kree Noble takes her turn and uh, offense is up, Kree Reaper, Kree Reaper can then ult and immediately one shot one character with offense up and a crit. Uh, I've seen Kree Reapers, my Kree Reaper, uh, crack a Thanos for 130,000 damage on a crit. That is a ridiculous amount of damage uh, for a minion on a team that's pretty average. So just a note, she is very good at doing damage, and that's pretty much all she does do. Uh, now we move to the last character. Now, obviously not the minion, but the guy who brings it all together, and we'll talk about why in a second. Ronin, the accuser, uh, was the worst character in the game for a very long time. Why do we regard it? If you ask anybody, there was a rule that used to be if you see Ronin, fight Ronin because he couldn't do anything. He basically was just type. His rework was one of the best reworks in the game, taking a character from complete uselessness and making them... What's the best way to say it? Uh, the best character on their team, I think, for a really long time. And that starts with Accuser. Uh, whenever this character or a Kree gains energy, they fill their speed bar by 20% and are healed for a ton of health of, I'm sorry, Ronin's max health, which is not nothing. Uh, this effect may be triggered by another passive, like Thanos, Kree Oracle, anyone else's Kree's ability. Gain 15 resist, Kree allies gain 15 persist, apply 20% max health, 20% damage to non-summoned Kree minion allies. This right here, the max health and uh, damage, is the biggest thing. He gives them all a giant health pool and a giant damage account, so he really is the leader of his team. Uh, you do prefer to use him with the Kree minions on that grounds, like because he makes them stronger in general. Uh, that said, the level five, whatever, doesn't matter. Universal weapon is great. Attack all enemies, uh, apply ability block to the primary target, apply ability block to two additional enemies. It's kind of like Strife's ultimate, except uh, you don't control the, the enemies that are targeted, which can be good or bad. Uh, instead of where Strife is only the adjacent, and if there's a tank on the edge, it might only hit one person, this will always at least attempt to apply ability block to three total characters, no matter who. You just might not get the characters you want, but you might, depending on when you use it. It's also a pretty decent big damage attack, so by all means, let loose. I don't know if it needs the extra 60%, but if this was 100%, I would have snap bought it. Uh, judgment, this is awesome. Uh, it says summon Kree allies, right? That That's not why we do this. Clear two negative effects from all allies is phenomenal, as you could probably tell from characters like JJ or Scientist Supreme. This uh, is a clear two negative effects option that summons characters. It will always summon the characters in the worst possible place based on whatever your team comp is. If you're trying to give energy out to adjacents, they're gonna go right between them, doesn't matter. So the summon is not the most important part of this ability, even though it does help. It's the clear two negative effects, uh, and not so many characters have that ability, which makes Ronin phenomenal uh, for that reason. He's a very good character, I think he's very underrated too. Uh, as for Hammer Smash, Clear two positive effects from primary target. Attack primary target for 140% damage plus 20 piercing. Not a lot of damage. Uh, this attack is unavoidable. Clear two positive effects before attacking is huge. Uh, the fact that it's unavoidable means he's going to get through evade. So he's going to hit someone with evade and actually remove it as opposed to just 
Uh, most attacks that are unavoidable don't proc the evade, they just leave it up. Uh, all in all, phenomenal attack, very good at clearing taunts, very good at clearing defense ups or death proofs. Uh, and as far as basics are concerned, uh, one of the better ones. Not many basic clear multiples unless you're a legendary character, so his rework really was strong. Uh, outside of the actual independent characters and their tier 4s, breakpoints are very simple. I believe you can unlock a 5-star Nick Fury with a 70k version of the Kree minions themselves, so assuming you keep Ronin at parity with the rest of the team, uh, a 70 to 100k Kree team is going to be adequate in Blitz, it's going to be a pretty painful team in on war defense to beat with buffs, but it's not going to be amazing. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily worry about taking the Kree team much further than 150k. They have really hard diminishing returns. Once they get to about 150k, it usually implies that they are very high star, 6 or 7. They're a gear tier 9, 10, I think Kree Reaper is 10, yeah. Sorry, some of these guys aren't there. Uh, 9, 10, even, you know, they they might be able to get a little bit stronger. I haven't really ever experienced a very high-powered 300 or 400k Kree team and cared. So I think that the 100 to 150k range for the Kree minions or the Kree minions plus Ronin uh, is more than adequate. Once they're each character is between 35 and 45k, you can just hard stop them you don't have to put anything else into them they're not really worth the gear uh, unless something changes where you need them for particular content or if you just don't have access to other characters like minerva or cm you and you need to lean on them for like the greek raids that require the cream minions other than that i don't really think there's much else to go on i don't think that they get significantly better the higher their power is i think they just become stronger versions of what they do now. I don't think that the breakpoints make them able to do something that they previously weren't. And even if they were, I think you can get away with just investing in characters like Ronin, Kree Reaper, and Kree Noble, and kind of leaving the rest of them behind, as you can kind of tell I did. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now, I'd like in this comment, if you can, uh, to just let me know a little bit more about your experiences with the Kree now. You know, whether you've been playing as long as I have and you say, man, these Kree have been absolutely phenomenal uh, or they've kind of fallen off or if you just even care, if you're working on them for any reason other than Star Wars, maybe you like the cut of their jib. I don't know. Uh, that said, that's it for the Kree. I don't necessarily think much of them now, but I do think that they are pretty standard. And as far as teams go, I'm giving them a B rating, not because they're terrible, but because they aren't great at anything and the only reason they are a b team is because they are versatile and usable enough in parts of the game that you do get value out of but they get diminishing returns not only the more you invest in them but the further in the game you get as you start working on more and higher priority characters once you've maxed out nick fury and gotten him seven star they really do kind of lose a lot of their luster well that's pretty much it for this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.